Good morning. It's an early freezing November morning and I'm out on a road trip heading out to see some megaliths. Okay, so I stopped to have a rest and just see the sun come up and watch the mist over the land here which I've been watching while I was driving it's so beautiful and actually there's a megalithic site over there and over there and I visited those and I'll leave the link below the video I don't have time to revisit them you know the days are short and things take more time than you think so let's enter this church that I've been thinking about ever since my last visit. It's a beautiful spot for just soaking in, you know, the vibes and... Oh, here's Christ. This is really one of those medieval churches, you know, really hardcore, thick-walled, small, located, sort of in the middle of nowhere. Time for another stop and the reason is a surprise because I'm not that far away now from the megalithic site I'm heading towards and I've been so um, uh, narrow sighted on that location and there are so many on the road and one of them is the monastery in Varnhem which I've seen on photographs and I've thought about coming here too so I just didn't um, realize or look closely enough to see that it's just on my way to the megalithic site. So here's this place. Have a look. Here's some quick facts about this church and abbey ruins. The abbey that used to be here was founded by the same Cistercian order that founded the abbey in Alvastra in the 12th century. Check out my video from that abbey ruin in Alvastra in the video description. In less than 100 of years, the abbey burned down and was totally ruined. But it was rebuilt and made even more grandiose than before. All was well until the Danes plundered and burned it down during the Northern Seven Years' War between 1563 and 1570. The abbey church was rebuilt and restored during the 17th century and its final restoration was in the 1920s. The abbey itself was left to fall apart to its current shape. What a beautiful Wednesday morning to get to see these kinds of places. Uh, I was just planning to see one but I've seen already enough for one day and there's more to come. So I'm grateful, grateful for uh, this uh, very chilly November morning but I haven't seen a cloud in the sky so hey let's take care of this day. Wonderful. There's a certain kind of vibe. You see, the sun w doesn't come up that high right now. There's this sort of ch uh, coldness, chilliness to the place. And there's still autumn colors, but they have almost all just gone away. Really like some sort of final um, stroke on the year, you know, like the year is ending. <laughs> But it's time to move on to reach those megaliths in uh, near a small place called Tidan. Okay, that was that for this location. Some ask, so why do you drive around and look at old stones or, you know, there's, there's not much to see. Maybe there isn't, but there is, uh, there is something to it, you know? There's a reason for everything. Why um, stones weighing tons have been placed in a certain way. There's a certain uh, reason some ruins are located on some locations, like churches, which have been built on older, uh, more ancient places of worship. Back in the days where people uh, 
really had a tentacles to pick out a good spot in nature and uh, you know uh, just like our earth has a variation in gravity and um, water mass uh, I mean check that out there are good explanations on that uh, even various uh, locations on a more uh, local or um, micro level have variations of uh, I'm going to use the word sort of energy but just a certain vibe you know a certain location where you can see um, the sunlight, sunlight in a certain way where just everything sort of comes down perfectly and you know we I live in a box most of the time in, in an apartment in a flat and uh, we spend our lives most most of the times in various boxes driving boxes to another box and so on watching this video in a box uh, so back in the days people didn't have that so they ch uh, ch uh, choose these uh, they had to ch uh, pick out the good locations and they are you know like old roads are always built on top of older roads which eventually became the uh, modern roads the same way places have been you know um, yeah, I mean, just the Vatican you know the the Catholic main place there is built on top of something more older so uh, just by driving out and um, you know being out in the nature in the fresh air seeing the landscape get getting familiar with the you know the country the region you live in uh, there's some beauty and satisfaction in that and also at, at some level uh, one reconnects to something um, within oneself and I, I'm not gonna waste time talking about it but that's sort of the reason why I do this basically because it might seem like a weird thing to do and not many people do that but you know when you're in a, in a southern Europe where you have so many beautiful old architectural uh, sites and places I mean I'm not there right now so I I take what I have here and uh, even though Sweden is much more vast and you know, scarce sort of like there's much more distance to it there are still uh, the same kind of um, uh, places not the same but you know their intention was sort of the same and I guess my intention is sort of similar while visiting them and so on and being out to such a place with with one's family is better I mean it's great but today it was a bit a bit uh, unsuitable so I'm here on my own and sort of getting it done all right let's move on Here I am at Askeberga skeppsättning and these blocks are huge, the second biggest in Sweden. And uh, just to give some quick um, like data, it's 55 meters long and 18 meters wide and the stones are about 13 tons on an average okay I'll just show you like how big it is and just stand in front of one what's really interesting about this place is that the uh, megaliths are standing where they originally stood uh, often the case is that the stones have been moved due to road constructions or if they have been smaller they have been tipped over vandalized and so on now um, no archaeological research has been done here besides uh, ground penetrating radar which was done in 2011 and of course to make a construction like this you need to have some sort of ID as a society or group of people that lived here uh, you need to carry out the work you need to have a purpose not much is known about this place it is dated to the years 500 to 1000 so about thousand thousand and a half years ago now the dating of these sites are is very 
weird because the one I visited some days ago in Hisingen was dated to five and a half thousand years ago. And there's no real, no real method of dating stones. In one of my other videos I said something along the line that farmers could not have built this and somebody commented so why is it so impossible for farmers to make something like this and I'm not saying that humans cannot do this or you know farmers didn't do this but if it was just a farming society there would be no purpose in making such a grand construction uh, if they worshipped something they would probably probably make something on a smaller scale and also life was very hard you know harvest was very important so uh, I don't see why they would waste time so my point is that there needs to be some kind of a higher purpose for this and uh, a bigger sort of social function for this and also manpower now of course people might have used uh, the, the space here in between the stones uh, the megaliths I mean to bury people to have some rituals in some other uh, locations you know they fi find some traces of, of some uh, you know uh, tree tools or uh, leather I don't know and then they sort of guess the site to be from that date but this can be much much older than it really is in the Viking age 500 to 1000 I suspect also this wasn't built by ordinary people. Vikings were mostly farmers and struggled in life. The reason Vikings, you know, those people left uh, Scandinavia was because, uh, you know, everything was scarce. If um, a father had three sons, like one would get the, um, the farming area or something and the two other sons would have to leave and, you know, make for their own future. So that's why they eventually became so uh, good at building ships and you know exploring the world and uh, doing all that stuff. It was out of necessity. So that in itself tells me that you know farmers wouldn't waste time on this. So my theory is this is much older. How it was constructed, I don't know. There's a kind of a quarry here, not a quarry, but a piece of. Um, like a bedrock that's coming out from the ground and um, they might have taken stones from there broken up stones who knows so that's why i said that uh, farmers didn't do this it's not that you know the people in themselves couldn't do this but the purpose the 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 energy the resources wasn't there to waste on something like this in the meantime, while I've been out driving and heading towards this place, I got new orders from my headquarters, my woman. So uh, we have been planning to get one of those uh, uh, double seat strollers. And uh, there's a second hand one, which is much cheaper than the one in the city in Gothenburg, because you know it's harder to get out to smaller places and buy them. So I got a mission to go and pick up that double seated stroller you know so it, it's a packed day i had fun and uh i also going to do some uh useful stuff so uh we're going to be able to drive around in a comfortable double seated stroller yeah that's family life <laughs> i'm telling you it's the same day um the skies have changed and there's a beautiful mist on the, this lake now it will get dark in about 40 minutes. I'm heading home to hot food and family. And both missions are accomplished. The new stroller is in the back. Apparently it's a good one because you can uh, flex it out to the side and have two seats or one seat depending on how many kids you take out. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. All the best.